more and more as we go through this, we're going to have a, an assignment for the week that you need to go home and spend time. You can take, you can write it on the back of that paper there, but I'd like for you to hold on to these pieces of paper. Uh, we are going to do for everybody that's um, 18 and under that can write. If you fill these out and faithfully for nine weeks, we're going to do something big for you at the end. Probably do a pizza party, take you out for pizza. The, the, the pizza place we have in town that's really good called Gaddy's. I mean, I'm just kidding. Uh, but we might do that. What I thought about doing is taking you to Gaddy's and then uh, getting you one of those cards with, uh, so you can play games. And I want to I want to reward you for being faithful. Um, so anybody 18 and under, if you want to do that, and uh, don't wait till the end and say, oh, i got to fill it all out. But John, did you get one? Oh, sorry. Come on, guys. Live. Skipping people. I'll teach you how to do this. Hey, let's uh, be ready. There'll be some more coming in, so go ahead. Blake, Ashley, if you don't mind just kind of sitting at the back and handing them out as people come in, that would be great. Um, thank you, man. Sorry. All right. Well, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the day. Just thank you for our church and uh, the work you're doing in it. Thank you for the good week of camp we had and uh, the souls that were saved and um, the lives that were changed. And uh, we're looking forward to hearing about more of that today from our teens. Lord, just thank you for the work you're doing. Uh, we, can, we can feed, we can try our best to study and be prepared, but it's you that does the work in the hearts of people. We pray that you do that, that you give just some, uh, solidify some things as we go through this study together these next nine weeks. And that you'll grow our church and that when we come out of this, we'll come out with a new fresh uh, fire and desire to serve you in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Simon, you mind closing those doors for me, buddy? Thank you. Just both of those. My kids are back there and they're, they're loud. Ephesians 1 is where we're going to be this morning. And uh, I want you, as we study through this, to be ready. If, if anybody needs, I have a few pens up here. Um, if anybody needs one. Two dollars a piece. I'm just kidding. So come on, send somebody or wave your arm, and I'll get you one. I else need one. Here you go. You go, brother Andy. You have one. I got three more. Maybe you try to remember to bring one, or we can buy we can buy a bunch. I know brother Terry supplies pens, but I'm not I'm not as nice as he is. But um. But I want us to really, as we go get ready to go through this, uh, we're going to be covering a lot. We're going to be probably hitting 45 minutes, ground running. I want you to have your Bibles ready. Uh, I'm going to call on some of our younger men and maybe some of our older guys to stand up and read Scripture. You don't have to stand up, excuse me, just but to open your Bibles and read Scripture. And so kind of be ready for that. Uh, Ethan, be ready. Uh, we'll get Blake ready. And anybody that knows how to read, Brother Jordan, be ready. I'm always I'm just looking around for people who know how to read. This is hard. And um, <laughs> no, but just be ready because I might say, hey, because if you look in your, your notes there, there are a lot of scripture that we're going to go to. And some of this is going to be so elementary as you go through this. But I, I, I got to stop assuming that people understand what we're doing. And I think part of the reason where we why we are where we are in modern day uh, Christianity is because of this assuming that, oh, they know that. Uh, but many of you uh, with gray hair, you remember being taught things. You were trained early on. It was a training process. It wasn't just a Sunday school. It was training. It was repetitive. It was teaching. It was, And then you turned around and did that. And somewhere we started, and it doesn't take much, but somewhere we started to drop the ball in that area. And uh, we just want to pick it back up and start training. So we're just going to start with this topic today, and that is uh, what is the church? What is the church? I don't know. I guess I didn't put a uh, question mark at the end of that, so you're going to have to just forgive me. And then I think the copier liked the taller font for church there. I don't know why it kind of stretched that on yours. But um, but Ephesians chapter 1 says, and again, have your Bibles ready. Um, if you don't have one, look around. There's probably one in a uh, chair somewhere, an eighth chair there. And uh, have your Bibles ready and be ready for that. Uh, all you guys coming in, Eli Z, you young guys be ready because I'm going to call on you to read some scripture. So the church, Ephesians 1, chapter 22, 
or excuse me, verse 22, and hath put all things under his feet. Okay, he's, he's speaking about Christ here, this last part of Ephesians 1. And, ga and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. And then he clarifies, which is the body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. This is the church. We are in the church today. We are gathering in the church. We are the church gathering. We've talked a thousand times that the that this building is not the the church, but we are the church. And we're gonna, I want to kind of talk about that a little bit today. Uh, church is the word ecclesia. If you um, that's the word that they translated to church. There's actually a lot in the etymology of that word, and we won't get into that all of that today. Uh, but where that word comes from, but it basically has the idea of assembly, called out assembly. Um, and uh, I get the term and it's kind of this thing that's going around a lot today. And it's that we are the church, man. We are the church. And, and I get that. And we are the church. We are individually the church. Amen. Individuals of the church. Uh, the church is not just this thing that you're not a part of until you come to the gathering. Um, it is very much so the gathering of the body of Christ. But I, I get that term, but we need to kind of rethink it maybe and think of it in terms of uh, that we're members of the body of Christ. Um, God's word many times just reiterates things and uh, uses different ways to explain things. He says we're members, we're part of the body. And uh, it, it would be crazy for me to say I have an arm and uh, to cut my arm off and set it over in one room and say that that's, that's the body. Um, that's actually not the body. That's part of the body. And, um, and so what we have is we are all members. Re, relearn what that whole member thing means. Member. When you think of member, you're, many of our minds go to like a membership to something. And that's why everywhere you go, there's a membership. You can be a member. I think there was, we went to McDonald's this morning and they were like, would you like to add points so I could become a member there? And, uh, and all I was thinking is I'd rather not go to this place enough times in a year to get points. So I just said, <laughs> no, I do not want that. Uh, and so it was like a splurge for us this morning because we wanted to come early and Kenner's like, we can run through McDonald's. And so, yeah, we got a bacon, egg and cheese biscuit this morning and, and, and I'll probably uh, regret that later on. But uh, no, I don't want to be a member of McDonald's. All right? I'm already a member of Kroger, you know, and I, I get I like that because every once in a while we slide that thing. And um, I use my mother-in-law's. She doesn't know I do this, but I use her phone number. And just anybody I can. I just put all y'all's phone numbers in there. You wonder where your points go? Right here. No, I'm kidding. I know that. But I uh, put our phone number in there. And sometimes it says, you got a dollar off. You want to use it on gas? A dollar off. Uh, that's good membership there. Uh, Sam's Club, all this stuff. Members. What are we talking about? We're talking about uh, anatomy when we say member. And so you have members of your body. We've gone over this a thousand times. I know you have an arm, you have legs, you have fingers. These are members. You are members of the body of Christ. While we do church membership, and uh, even though we don't have clear scripture that says you have to join a church, but it is a very, through scripture, and then when you read our membership agreement, it's very clear on this, but through scripture, just a casual reading of scripture shows you that uh, there is a very there's an importance on being part and understanding your part in the body of Christ. And so a membership agreement is just saying, yes, I agree that we I, I'm coming to be part of this local body. So um, the church, number one, uh, maybe you'll go through here and fill it out. You, you already know the answers. Um, Eli, can you go to Romans chapter 16, verse five? Um I'll go to 1 Corinthians 16, 19. And then, uh, Brother Jordan, could you go to Colossians 4, 15? We're going to read through these scriptures. Uh, if you're listening on YouTube, thank you for tuning in with us. P please like and comment and share with your friends. I'm just kidding. Uh, but do like and uh, do, or you don't have to like, but just comment that you're, you're watching and uh, leave questions on there. If you're not able to make it, uh, I would love for you to be here. So please be here. Don't be like, oh, it's... There's, but we have YouTube for people that have to work today and we're going to go back and watch it later, people that are in the back. And um, there's links to that on our website, by the way. If you're away from it, you can go to our website, click the link. It should take you straight to our YouTube page where you can where you can watch that. You don't have to have Facebook to do anything in our church. Amen. 
Uh, that's a good thing. First Corinthians 16, 19, uh, Romans 16, five. You good on that, Eli? Go ahead. Amen. I gave you the hard one. Figured you're good. I, I got I got one as well here. Romans uh, or First Corinthians sixteen nineteen. Look what he says. The churches of Asia, Asia salute you. Aquila and Priscilla salute you much in the Lord with the church that is in their house. It's interesting, isn't it? Um, you got Colossians four fifteen there, brother Jordan. Do you see the term that we're seeing a lot? Uh, I got one more here. Philemon two. Um, well, um, but that first part, what's that first blank going to say? The church is never or is not referred to as a what? Somebody go ahead and fill it as a building. That's, that's right. It's not referred to as a building. Um, Philemon 2, Paul says, and to our beloved uh, Apaphia and Archippus, our fellow soldier, into the church in thy house. I mean, you're talking now four of these epistles that have been written referring to the church that is in their house. Um, what does that mean? Some commentaries say that he's talking about their family, that that family is actually a church. I, I disagree with that. I, um, if that was true, then we would we would all just have our church families. And uh, we don't really see that example in Scripture anywhere. Now, I will say this. If you somehow ended up on a deserted island and it was you and your family, uh, you are the church of that island. Amen. And uh, you are that church. But um, the church was gathering. It's really simple. They were gathering in these people's houses. And there's reasons for that. We don't have to get into. But uh, it, it's, it, it, is, it doesn't say that the house was the church. It says the church that was gathering in the house. We always had the, the church. In thy house, the church in his house, the church. So they were meeting in these homes of these people. Philemon had a gathering that was in his house, probably for persecution's sake. And that's one of the reasons we're so thankful for America, that we can freely do what we're doing right now. But this house, uh, you know, we could say it belongs to the Lord, but you, who, who does your house belong to besides BB&T? Amen. <laughs> But if your house is paid for, who does your house belong to? It belongs to the Lord. Whoa, wait, wait a minute. I paid the mortgage on that thing. God didn't pay the mortgage on that thing. Did he, did he really not pay the mortgage on that thing? He did pay the mortgage on that thing. He gave you a job. He gave you the ability to work that job. All things belong to the Lord. Everything we have belongs to the Lord, okay? So this is the Lord's house, but so is your house. Man, and you know what? You start thinking that way, it'll totally change. See, uh, let's let's all watch on this TV screen what we watched in our house this week. <laughs> all right, Stephen, you're rambling. Let's go to the next point. No, you don't understand, Brother Stephen. That's my house. This is his house. Is it really? Uh, see how this starts working, and this see how the hypocrisy starts in the in churches where we say we do something different now. Uh, we're going to get into it, and actually your assignment for the week, and you can see there at the bottom of all these papers, you're going to have an assignment, and I want you to go home and, and do something, because next week we'll have we'll start right off the bat with open discussion, and, and I will condense my lesson to three minutes if I have to, because I want the open discussion, and the question is going to be at the end is, what should we look like when we gather as the body? And I have there, go as far as you want to go with this, but what, we should, we should, what should we look like uh, when we gather as the body? Yeah, I wore a suit and tie today just because uh, I wanted to. Kennedy goes, why are you wearing a suit? And I'm like, because I want to. <laughs> it was really good. It's so much. It's so nice when you can do something because you want to, not because you have to. And she goes, well, you look really nice. And I said, well, thank you. And uh, I said, I'm sure many people will say that today. Oh, you look really nice, Stephen. You didn't look nice last week, but you look really nice today. And listen, I look nice all the time, no matter what I'm doing. <laughs> But no, I did. I, I looked today and I was like, I like that tie and uh, I'm going to wear it with this shirt and I'm going to wear it with that suit. And, but what should we look like when we gather as the church? I want you to go home and I want you to pray about that. I want you to take that as far as you want to take that thing. And I want to see what answers we can come up with next. And uh, I'm excited. There's going to be every week we're going to have a question like that that's going to challenge tradition. Uh, but that's also going to cause us to look to God's word and look to tradition. Traditions are not bad. Amen. You know, one of the greatest traditions I like, uh, 
single stall bathrooms. That's a tradition. All right. <laughs> you know, it's just, there's one. You're like, well, I didn't expect that. I didn't see that coming. Um, yeah, I just, you know, I, I don't, I'm glad we, I'm glad the tradition is not that they have one huge room where everybody goes to the bathroom in the same big room. Uh, by the way, there's some third world countries that that's kind of that way. If you've ever been to a third world country, I'm glad I like our American traditions. Traditions aren't bad always. Um, but, and, and we need to call that out. We say, okay, some of this is because tradition. And uh, then we need to see if that tradition's Bible based. So the, the, the body, the church, this building belongs to the Lord. But by that, you know who it also, because your house at home, it belongs to the Lord, but your name's on something. Your name is on the deed, hopefully, if you own your home. Um, you own that. It's yours, and you're commanded to take care of that home and so, or that, that building that God gave you to live in. And we are also commanded to take care of this body. Um, Brother Jeff Wright said, and I don't say this as a slander, I promise, but we need to be careful. Uh, and I'm not, Brother Jeff doesn't complain, but Brother Jeff, I was talking to him this week and uh, that's why he's not at church today. He's so mad. No, he's, he's he took a, oh, he's going to listen. I love you, Brother Jeff. Just kidding. Uh, they, they have not got away. They got, a, they bought a new home and uh, they have been a very busy few months. And then with his daughter passing, and this is a, a window they could get away for a few days. And I said, man, go at it and uh, happy for them. But I was talking to Brother Jeff this week and asked him how the church looks Sunday night. He said, look, I don't know why he said it this way. He said, but he said, I thought we had it. I didn't think we had the Rochesters. He said, I thought we had ACDC. <laughs> That's what he said. For you that don't know ACDC, is it's electrical currents, the different type of electrical currents. And it happens to be a rock and roll group, too, as well. But um, he said, I, there was stuff everywhere in that church. Well, we had a lot of visitors. We had the Rochesters. They had their whole crew that comes. And so there was probably some of that that was just residual from that. And that's okay. No problem. But I know in our home, we, we take care of our home because it's our home that God gave us. And, uh, you know, we, we don't just leave trash laying around. Sometimes we do. And if it's been a busy day and uh, people think, I, I think people think that we're like Nazis about the way we keep our house clean and they're scared to walk in. No, we just like to keep, we try you do that as well. I've been in, I've been in almost all your all's homes. You, you try, you, you keep a good home and uh, we should do the same thing with this because this belongs to God, but it actually belongs to all of us as well. All right. This isn't, this doesn't have Bill Begley's name on the deed. We are a, uh, we are a, uh, an incorporated, uh, not a business. We're a church. We're a nonprofit church. So there's no person that this would ever fall back to. It would fall back to a corporation of a church. But that corporation is uh, represented by people, and we are the people. And from the smallest member to the to the greatest member, however you want to classify them, this is our this is our building, and we should take care of it in that way. So I, I want to man, this I think God's helping us with these things. And so the church is never referred to as a building. Um, we're already at Ephesians there, number two. The church is Christ what body, body. That's what he says. Ephesians one again. He says which is the body. And so when we think about the body, um, we, we've gone over this a lot. I don't need to spend a lot of time on this point, but it's, it's Christ's body. It's not my body. It's not your body. We are members. When we, when we accepted Christ as our Savior, by faith put our, uh, our, uh, we put our belief, we put our trust, we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. We called upon Him for salvation. We declared Him publicly through baptism that we are believers in Jesus Christ. We became part of His body. All right? The same as when you, uh, and he uses this illustration in other place, but the same as when you got married and you stood at, a, uh, at an altar. Now, my, my ring broke this week, and so I've got another one coming, but... Um, we, we put a ring on and uh, we were declaring to everybody there that we are becoming, the Bible says, uh, that, they, that you leave father and mother. Remember that part? We don't like that part. <laughs> Amen. Uh, you leave father and mother. They're no longer yours. They're not. They're your child and they'll always be your child. I get that. But actually, biblically speaking, you leave father and mother. You're no longer attached to father and mother. You leave father and mother and you cleave, you attach to, it's actually an old English word that's changed. Cleave means to divide. <laughs> that word meant to bring together. And you cleave unto your wife so that the two, Jesus said, are now made one. So I'm not, it's not 50 50 in my home. It is one. All right. There's, it's just one, period. 
And it needs to be taught and needs to be discussed more before people get married, that you're not just getting this person that's going to be able to satisfy you in some way that you need, whether it be food or physically or however you need someone to satisfy you. Uh, that sadly, that's the immaturity of most marriages anymore. It's just like, I just need this person because they, they make me happy. And um, no, there's a great commitment, a biblical, if you want to go back to the very beginning, we see the rib being taken out of Adam and uh, created a wife out of that. So we see a very clear picture that she was part of him. And he gave that from the very beginning. And so from the very beginning, he created male and female. And then when they're married, they become one. Well, when we are saved, uh, we are made one in the body of Christ. So he says that the middle, Ephesians tells us, he goes on here in chapter two to tell us that the middle wall or partition is taken down, that there's no more difference anymore between anybody, that we are now made all one in Christ. And so we understand when we say I, I'm part of the body, I'm part of the church, which is what is the church? The church is the assembly of the body. All right, that, that momentarily when we separate, we are going out our own ways, but we're still part of that body. And I'll tell you the truth, if you're saved and you're part of the body, you long for the gathering of the body. You long for it. You need it. You want it. If you're not part of the body, it doesn't mean, a, it doesn't mean anything to you to not be part of the body. Now, I understand there's seasons where people have to miss church. There's seasons where people go through, maybe they miss a month or two. I don't, I don't send out the, the hound dogs when someone misses church one time because I don't preach that. I can't tell you by law that Hebrews, when he says not forsaking, means you can't miss one Sunday. But I worry about Christians, and we say this in, in our membership agreement. We talked about this when we talked about members. I worry about Christians that can uh, take the gathering flippantly just to miss any time they want to miss. They don't think of it a whole, uh, very importantly. I wonder about that. Not because of a role, not because of, and you say, Brother Stephen, are you talking to me? I'm not talking to anybody. I'm just saying when you understand Scripture and the way the body is, you long for that body. You need the rest of the body. You need what the rest of the body can offer you. Not what the pastor can offer you. What the body can give you. And man, that's so relieving. That's relieving to me because then I realize, you know what? All that pressure don't land on me. I have to follow Jesus Christ. God gives pastors as overseers. That's what they're called. O over, uh, oversight. He says that many times in Scripture. We're overseers to look over the flock, to keep an eye over the flock, not all the time as individuals, but for the direction of the flock. Where, where, where's the flock going? And when a wolf wants to come in, we're there to, we see that. We see, the, we see someone that's coming in that could be a, a distraction. So that's what the pastor does, overseer. But the body gets its sustenance, sustenance from the rest of the body. Amen. We're starting to do that. Brother Jordan, we started that. Uh, I didn't even really de declare that's why what we were doing, but I knew exactly what we were doing. But I like to start our Sunday morning services with this exhorter that God gave us, who's a wonderful, gifted, uh, I, I believe it. He's just, uh, you say, I don't know, I don't know, I don't really care. I, you know, I've heard him preach. He preaches good. I've never heard any negative about your preaching. It's actually, last time you preached, I think I almost got voted out, so you won't be preaching again for a while. Um, I don't know. So we get all up in that performance. I, li I don't like his preaching. Somebody, there's a church I know that's getting ready that could lose their, you know, their pastor might be resigning and, and they got a guy that they think might be bringing in. And someone said, that guy can't preach his way out of a wet paper bag. And I was like, what does that even mean, by the way? How do you preach your way out of wet? And they, they're all concerned about the way people preach instead of what they're saying. Listen, when the, sh when the shepherd brought the food to the sheep, the sheep don't care what platter it was brought on. They don't care how it's delivered. They care about it being good food. Amen. And uh, I like all kinds, man. I, I think it's great if the shepherd wants to swing in on a rope. Woohoo! Here it is. Yay! And they're like, okay, it's great. But at the end of the day, feed me. So I like when preachers get, I like when Uncle George preaches. I love it. He preached Friday night. One of the best messages I ever heard. Just wonderful message. I like fiery preaching. Um, I like just a man standing up there. I've had, I've seen man stand up there. Okay, turn your Bibles. And you got to everybody be quiet because you can barely hear what they're saying, but they feed. Amen. So we we feed and uh, and you're fed not just through the pastor. You're fed through others around us. Brother Jordan um, speaks and it and it feeds. I think many of you, if you're honest, have been very encouraged on Sunday mornings when Brother Jordan just says a little word here uh, that you'll remember. 
uh, as he exhorts the church. And so it's the body. And we need to see more of that. The reason I say that, we need to see more of that. Number three, we see the church referred to in a general sense. Hebrews 12. Um, let's see here. Z, can you read Revelation 7, 9? Or should I just start and say, can you read? You can read. You got that. I have... <laughs> I'm going to read Hebrews 12 here. And then I've got Matthew 17, 18. Um, this is an interesting topic. and I don't want to spend a lot of time with it. Uh, let's see here who we could get on that. Um, Brother Mike, could you read Matthew 17, 18 there? Brother Mike Mayer. And then uh, what did I give you? Revelation? Z, is that the one I gave you? Okay, I got Hebrews then. Hebrews 12. I'm saying these so you listen at home. Hopefully you can pull your Bibles out and listen. You won't be able to hear these as they read them. But Hebrews 12, 22 and 23, Revelation 7, 9, and Matthew 17, 18. The church, listen to how the church is referred to. This is interesting. Now, I said it this way because I don't like the way people put terms on stuff. People say, what do you think about the universal church? And I'm like, what do you think about the universal church? I just hate that people just plop these questions on you. And so I, it's really difficult to understand where people are coming from. And uh, listen what this, the Bible says, though, here. Hebrews 12, 23, or 22 says, But ye are come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. Now, it is interesting he's speaking to Jews here, okay? So he's using terminology that he probably might not have used in, in other places, but... This is he's speaking to these Jews. He says the heavenly Jerusalem and an innumerable company of angels. Now let's. Uh, is there an extra battery, guys? He says verse twenty-three to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to the God, and to God the Judge of all and to the spirits of just men made perfect. It's interesting. He says, to this general assembly and church of the firstborn. Uh, I, I, my personal belief on it, I won't split hairs on this. I will not argue about it. I don't want to argue about it. I do want to get your input. If you have questions, you have something you want to say later, I, I will listen to anybody. Uh, but I believe we are part of a church. of the living God in a general sense that is represented in a very physical, literal, uh, local sense. This is the body of Jesus Christ that one day, I believe one day in heaven, we will be brought together. All right. And I don't believe in heaven. They're going to be the Maranatha section over there. All right. No more, no more clicks. All right. We don't, we, we really try to tear that down. We don't have clicks. We don't like clicks, but, um, um, so, but that day we will be, gathered together we will be assembled together but that assembly is for a day that is that is coming and we see that all through scripture where god god he he demonstrates something in a, a way now that there's going to be a future um realization of and so we see that in the general sense uh z go ahead buddy All right, thank you. And then uh, Matthew 17. Brother Mike, you good on that? And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. And I told you the wrong scripture, but that was kind of funny, though. Sorry about that. You can laugh at that. That's funny. Sorry, Brother Mike. <laughs> that has nothing to do with the church. <laughs> I'm so glad it happened to you, though. It could happen to anybody. But yeah, he did rebuke that devil, though. Amen. <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> I'm really sorry, Brother Mike. That's what I get for trying to use Matthew to, to demonstrate what the church is. Amen. For you that know what I'm talking about, that's kind of funny. All right. Sorry, Brother Mike. Thank you, though. It was really good. Yeah, you can scratch that part out, or you can figure out which one it is. <laughs> that was not done on purpose. And so it's referred to in a general. So we see that. I hope you see that. I hope we can understand that. But more importantly, let's go down to that fourth one. The church referred to in a local sense. Now, we have a couple verses where it's referred to in a general sense. That's why we don't make a big deal about that. People build their whole lives about this general sense. And that, this is the danger of that is this. Oh, yeah, I'm part of the church. Yeah. And so you so you so when do you gather with the church? 
one day when Jesus comes back, right? Well, they believe in this universal, and I, and I understand that, I get that, but we see that demonstrated today in a local sense, all through scripture, and we're going to see that right here. So, uh, Brother Mike, I'm going to give you another shot at it, uh, since you totally messed that one up, because I obviously gave you the right passage. Um, I am so sorry, right? I feel really bad. I am checking yours. I'm actually right here in 1 Corinthians 7. Uh, do 1 Corinthians 7, 17. Yes, sir. Oh, was it? Hey, thank you for being a good member of the body of Christ and actually helping your pastor out. Instead of the rest of the members that are like, ah, ha, ha, laugh at him. 16, 18, what's he saying? Jesus, no, that's 17, 18. I almost did it again. And I said to the, oh, there, uh, he told Peter, upon, uh, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Yeah, so this, this, guy, this, this idea of the church, now it's a New Testament word, one time, and I think, I don't know if I have it written down here, but we see one member, one mention of it in the Old Testament. People want to make that one mention, you know, the, the church in the wilderness. And they're like, oh, there was a church in the wilderness, you know, and they had an organ and a piano and they took up the offering. And it was the first really dead church. And um, no, it was all he uses that term for is the called out assembly. There was a called out assembly in the wilderness when they gathered. And that's all he was saying. There was a, there was an assembly of people. That word was used to describe that one time. And now we'll build a whole doctrine based on that thing. And we don't believe that the church was in the Old Testament. We see some things where we understand some of the, I believe, shadows of the church to come, if that's the right way of saying that. Uh, but I don't believe that we had a church in the Old Testament. Uh, all right, Acts 15, 41. Uh, Brother Mike, you're going to get 1 Corinthians 7, 17. Um, let's see here, anybody else? You got that? Go ahead, be ready. Go ahead, bro. He went through confirming the churches. He didn't go through confirming the church. He went through confirming the churches. Go ahead, flip over the page there, do 16, 5. So the church. They were established in the face of uh, faith. Um, Brother Isaac, do you mind reading 2 Corinthians 8.18 there? And then 11.8. I hope they're right. Brother Mike, you got 1 Corinthians 7.17? You don't have to stand, brother. I've already embarrassed you. I'm sorry. Go ahead and read. But if God has distributed every man, and the Lord has called everyone, so that he walk, and so Lord, and the eyes are in all churches. In all churches. 11.18, he says, uh, for first of all, when ye... Come together in the church. I hear that there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. Well, man, listen to that. Of course, you know what he's getting ready to introduce right here, the Lord's Supper. And uh, he said, when you come together in the church, all right? So you say, well, there it is. There it is. There was a building. Well, we've already established that where was that building? Probably in someone's house, because that's what we had there. Here, we don't have to meet in your all's house. And you can all say amen to that, because uh, you're talking about messing up your Sunday. Um, all right, we're all just going to show up at your house. We have a house, that was what we call the church house. That's where that, that term came about. And that's a very, I would call that a biblical term. That this is the church house. So when you came together in the church, he said, there are divisions among you. And he says, I believe this. And he goes on and says, so that they that are manifest or they that are approved would be made manifest. So there were people that were gathering in these bodies that were not approved. Uh, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed. So there's a there's an approval of, uh, I think an approval that you are a child of God, an approval that you're walking in the Spirit. What did they say with the early church when they needed a, when they needed deacons? You remember that part? The apostles got up and said, "Okay, we need this." By the way, after the church had gone to about eight thousand people, and there were widows indeed that were suffering affliction, and they they needed widows indeed. We'll talk about that one day. Um, by the way, if you if you have a mother-in-law, a mother, or an aunt, that's a widow. She is not a widow indeed. You know what your calling is in life? To take care of them. It's your calling to take care of them, to do everything you can to take care of them. You say, well, I'll let somebody else take care of them. If, if, if people took care of the widows that were in their life, we wouldn't have the issues, a lot of the issues we have today. That's what the, that's what the Bible commands us to do. I was, my life changed a couple of months ago, not just because my father-in-law died, but because I became the caretaker now uh, and right now, she doesn't need a lot of care, amen, because I don't care. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I love, man, seriously, she just, she, she, she laughs. I haven't yet, she's not yet killed me. You'll know one day when I don't show up that I've crossed the line. Um, but 
I told her, and I told Roger before my, before he passed, I said, I will not let Donna have needs. I will do everything I have to, to take care of Donna. And I mean that. That to me was the, that was to me like the day, like surrendering to go to a mission field. It was obeying God's will for my life. And I understand that was a big obligation and I want to take it very seriously. And, and when there's other brother-in-laws and sisters that are involved and so it doesn't all fall on me, but I want to take care of my mother-in-law. And by the way, if you have somebody in your family, that's a widow, it is your responsibility to take care of them. Men. Amen. That's what you get this responsibility on. Anyways, I don't know where I wrote you off on that. Uh, the church, the deacons, that's called a rabbit trail. Um, so when they called the deacons, what did, what did they say? They said uh, they needed someone to take care of these widows so the apostles could give their time to writing down the word of God for distributing the word of God. And, and uh, so they needed someone to help with the Lord's Supper and taking care of widows. And the apostles looked at the, 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 the body. And I, I personally believe that they didn't have this gathering of 8,000 people with a megaphone and said, choose you out of men, among you seven men. I believe uh, just like Moses did in the wilderness when he was too burdened and his father-in-law said, hey, listen, you need to get some men established, uh, some uh, kind of people under you that you can distribute the, the weight to. That's what he told Moses. I believe the early church did that. I believe there were more than just the, the 12 apostles, obviously. There were a lot of disciples. Choose you out among you, seven men, full of the Holy Ghost, uh, honest report, and let them do this. It's interesting. The pastor, the, the apostles didn't do that. And so they went and they chose seven men that exuded, as Paul was saying here, they demonstrated, they were, they showed themselves approved. They out of their bellies were flowing rivers of living water. They were full of the Holy Ghost. And there was no question. We do that today, and this is why we don't do that. Because if I if I came up today and said, choose you out among you seven men full of the Holy Ghost, you know what we do? All right, let me see their bank accounts. Because obviously if they have money, they're full of the Holy Ghost. And we would choose the richest, most notable people in our church to become our deacons. Can I get an amen so I'm not the second Stephen that gets stoned? I'm not saying we're not mature enough to do that, but that's what churches all around this world do. Find out the men that don't, that, that don't want to do anything. Now, we have trustees in our church that are not deacons. We legally, we do that for legal purposes. And uh, the trustees in our church have proven faithful. I'm, uh, number one, they've tr proven faithful. They're faithful to the gathering, and I don't take that lightly. Um, but they've also been faithful in, uh, in giving to the church. I don't know what any of them give to the church. I don't know what any of you give to the church. I said I was joking with somebody the other day about tithe, and they said, well, we tithe when you preach a good message. <laughs> and uh, I said, so have you tithed since you've been here? And they said one time. And uh, <laughs> it was, I was glad they had a good sense of humor. I don't know what you give. But I know, uh, I know our, our trustees have been faithful in giving. They've been faithful in attending, faithful to do. See, just because they might not do things here publicly, uh, there's, there's a couple of them I can call at any time. I know any time I need something, I can call Bill Begley and say, hey, I need you to do this. He'd, he'd do it. Now, I don't call him all the time because I just, for some reason, rather do it myself than ask somebody. I'm, I'm learning. But I know Bill Begley would do I know Randy, Randy Edwards would do it. I know Brother David. I know the men we have. And so that's, that's trustees. That's different. One day when we look to maybe if we need deacons, that's the criteria. Why do I say that? Because there's an approval. There is your life ought to show outwardly what you believe inwardly. Correct? All right. If you I'm a big, I'm a I'm against debt. I've been against debt my whole life. How much debt do you have? Three hundred million dollars debt. But I'm against it. No, you're not against it. You hate it, but you're not against it. You do it. You know, I'm telling you, I'm a health nut. I am a health nut. And after I eat this third nutty bar, I'm going to explain to you why I'm a health nut. You know, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. Oh, are you? Yeah. Because I yell at my neighbor all the time and I get mad all the time and I do this all the time and I, got, I, I backbite and I get angry and I have unforgiveness. Are you a follower of Jesus Christ? It ought to show outwardly what you are in, inwardly. And uh, man, those are two good rabbit trails. I think I got a rabbit. Well, ask we rabbits, man. They're dead today. All right. There's more passages you can go to to see this referred to. They're all Galatians to the churches in Galatia, uh, not to the church, this this universal sense to the churches, the individual churches. Go ordain elders in these churches. And uh, we see this in a very specific sense. And then lastly, we see that the church is the pillar and ground of the what? Truth. Uh, I, I gave you an easy one there. First Timothy. 
Now, I like this because this is what part of this book was written about, and this is what many of the epistles are written about. But if I tarry long, I want to come to you. I'm hoping to come to you shortly. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God. That's a good King James way of saying, hey, listen, if I can't come to you, you need to know how you need to act in the church of God. In the church of God. What's he say? In the house of God. Excuse me. In the house of God. So right there would be the only time you could say that almost you start thinking that he's talking about the, the, the building. All right. But listen to what he says. To behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, which we've already established is not a building. It is a body of believers, which you are, we are all members of, particularly, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. What a, what a great explanation of what the church is. Hey, you know what we have in this world today? No love for truth. I want to, let me just go through these, and if I have a minute, I want to testify about something. But uh, number one, where truth, this is the church, the gathering of the church, all right? So when I can say truth, I, or when I say church, I have no problem saying I'm going to church. I have no problem with that. I mean, I've had people nitpick, nitpick my whole life. and Well, you are the church, Brother Stephen. No, I'm going to the church. That means I'm going to the gathering of the body of Jesus Christ that I'm a part of, and that's Maranatha Baptist Church. So where the truth is discovered through its members, individually seeking God on your own time, if you're here today and the most you've ever gotten fed in your life is sitting in this chair, you are anemic in your Christian walk. It would be crazy if you took a newborn baby, hand them to their mom and said, now feed them Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. You would be crazy. But somehow we just think when a person's saved, that's, what, that's, that's all they need. Uh, and I think you understand that. You seeking God on your own is important. Not just seeking Him, but reading. Reading till He feeds you. You get fed. And then now you can turn around and feed the rest. And our Sunday school teachers, I want you not just reading curriculum. I want it to be, curriculum's fine. But it must come from an overflow of what you're studying in your own life. What you're reading. Your own experiences. Amen? It needs to the most effective coaches in the world. There are good coaches, sports coaches, who never played a lick of sports. But there are the best, most effective coaches are the ones that, that lived it, that played it, and now they're turning around and telling everybody else, this is, this is, I learned from my experiences, and then I added to my experiences, I added all this other knowledge. We must be learning and living in our own life. So where truth is discovered through its members, where truth is declared by its members, all right. So we got this idea that and it's I'm telling you, it's Catholic in its roots. I know good Catholic people. I do. I met Catholic people in this town. that have a better testimony than Baptist. I know. And I'm not even exaggerating. I've asked them, how do you know you're saved? Because I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He saved me for my sins. Oh, well, that's not what I heard growing up. Well, that's what I believe. I mean, I've seriously had this somewhat discussion with somebody. So do you pray to Mary? No, I actually don't. <laughs> so like we have these. Uh, so now you, know, you go to Italy, it's a whole, whole different story, by the way. But you know, when you're in the Bible Belt, just because a person says they're Catholic, I know, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying all Catholics are saved, by the way. But you know what else I'm not saying? That all Baptists are saved. But anyways, we won't get in trouble. But this thing, I, I have no problem, and I would tell any Catholic this, and because obviously I rip on Baptists plenty too, so uh, more, I, I rip on Baptists more than anybody. But... Um, the Catholic idea of what, how they do their services where a man stands, they took the scripture out of people's hands. Now, this is not something this Catholic church did. This is what happened around 300 A.D., where they took the scripture out of people's hands and a man stood up and declared which scripture they're allowed at. And we still see that all through these European countries and even in America where a man stands up. You don't have to bring a Bible to church. Why do you need a Bible? All you need to do is you need to do this thing on Saturdays where you come in and say, Father, forgive me, I've sinned. And uh, he says, okay, well, how bad have you sinned? And I guess you just confess you've sinned. And he says, all right, light that candle, do this thing, and uh, make sure you say your prayers and you're forgiven. And uh, sadly, a lot of that has crept into our churches. Well, I kind of get to church, you know, because that's my time. I got I to gotta get right with God. I wish we'd do the Lord's Supper so I could get right with God. 
I mean, seriously, that was the idea. I love the Lord's Supper because I can, that's, that's the time I get right with God. Oh, the Lord's Supper is actually the time where we remember what Jesus Christ did for us. And in doing that, we get right, we get right with him. That's the term we use. What's that mean? We confess. But man, I start every morning confession. You're no, you don't need a priest anymore, amen? You don't need a man standing behind a... This idea of an elevated platform, I'm just telling you, study it out. Prove me wrong. Because if you, if for some reason, when you try to touch tradition, people get they, get, they get iffy, man. They don't like it. But this elevated platform with a pulpit, the way it is, where we stand and we ascend into the pulpit and we speak down to people, that, that started in the Catholic Church because that man held the, the keys to heaven. Peter was given the keys, you know, and, they, and the, he was the first pope. Now, is it wrong to stand behind this? No, if it was wrong, I would have already taken this thing out. But you got to understand, when I get up in this thing, the only, you know why this thing's elevated? So you can see me. It's the only reason this thing's elevated. Uh, you know why this thing looks so nice? Because Brother Anthony did a great job making that thing. It's beautiful. There's nothing in this thing. I don't care moving that over there and, and having the Rochester stand out there and sing. I have no problem. Some people say, oh, don't move the pulpit. That's, and we say things like, that's, that's the heavenly desk of God. You know, I hate to laugh. I mean, and I, I'm not making fun because people say that. But we say that. You've, we've heard that. When you get behind that desk, brother, you better be ready. Man, before you get behind that desk, you better be ready. If you never stand behind this desk, you better be ready. You better have your heart right with God. Amen. Where do we get this stuff? Start, let's start tearing some of this back and find out where we are, where we are. See, I can say all these things today because I wore a tie. You can't get... It's awesome. I wore a tie today. I'm not making, I'm not making fun of these things. And I hope we have men in this church that... That, I, I was asking our youth, our, our, our camp workers. I took Sunday school the first week they were here, and I asked the guys. I said, uh, "I said, you know, I don't wear a tie a lot of times. Cause I just don't like them. They're uncomfortable for me. I feel, and it's not all about comfort. But I didn't have scripture that said that, that the man of God must be thoroughly furnished, rightly dividing where the truth and wearing a tie. I didn't have scripture for that, so I just said, I, I sometimes don't. By the way, we're going to talk about that in a couple weeks. We maybe talk about that next week a little bit, but." I asked those guys, I said, any of y'all like wearing a tie? And Eli there at camp, he said, I love wearing a tie. I said, man, wear a tie, man. They look sharp and they're great. I'm trying to tear back some of this stuff, find out why we do what we do. It's the pillar and ground of the truth, not the pillar and ground of tradition, pillar and ground of the truth. So the truth is declared by its members. Going back to this thing, you come in, sit down. Now the Bible says everything should be decently in an order. You know what he's talking about in that? You know how he's in the context of what he's talking about? He's talking about everybody shouldn't be just, hey, I got something to say. That's not decent order. If, we, if that starts, you know what we'll do? We'll have to stop that. I've taught Sunday school before and someone just wanted to just say something and, and it's not time for that. And so I'll just look right over them. We won't, have, we'd open the floor back. But the floor needs to be open to the body. So the members, we started doing that in this church. If you've noticed that, we're, gives you opportunity to, to communicate to the rest of the bodies to declare to its members. And then thirdly here, where truth is obeyed by its members. It's discovered, it's declared, and it's obeyed by its members. Ultimately, we must obey what we have learned. Or what we have learned is just knowledge. It's just knowledge. So this is the church. And we're meeting in here today. We, we can maybe take a couple more minutes. I want to try to be done at 15 till every time. But uh, any, any, any remarks or questions that anybody has? I would ask, and I don't say this jokingly, I would ask if I've said, here's how I'll operate. If I've said something that needs to be corrected, I would ask, and biblically speaking, that you correct me in private, okay? And I will correct it publicly if it's something that needs to be corrected. So I, I don't want, that's going to be awkward for everybody. If right now you say, well, actually, Brother Stephen, you're wrong. You come to me and I promise you, I will make it right publicly if I've said something or if I've said it in the wrong way. Maybe you said, I don't like I don't like you were a little bit degrading of some of that stuff. Come to me. All right. I've only killed two church members that have come to me and uh, and I've had like eight come to me. So your, your chances are really good. That's like a 20 percent chance you won't, you won't be killed. Anybody have any remarks? Is this helpful so far? OK, good. That's that's all. I, that's all I care about. Yes, ma'am.
Hmm. Hmm. And they weren't necessarily members. Sure. Exactly. But they would gather and find members. Amen. And so good. Amen. Some of you have done, and I won't ask for a raise of hands, but you've been in a town on vacation, on a, and you don't know if there's a good church to go to. Uh, some of you, I love hearing the stories when you come back uh, to, um, while you're been on vacation, you say, we just went to a different church just to try it out. And, and some of the sometimes funny stories, and sometimes uh, I love when they come back and say, man, I'm so thankful for Maranatha. I went to another church, and they weren't, um, you know, we learned from going to other churches. Uh, one pastor friend of mine told me, he encourages every pastor to go out um, and go to other churches and just find out not everybody does everything the same way. And, uh, but you've gone to a place, you don't know where to go. And so you say, you know what, we're going to have church. You feel kind of bad about it. And uh, some of you have done that. We're going to have church right here. We got a big family. We're just going to sit around. We're going to do what the church, the, the, the body of the church does. We're going to sit around and we're going to worship God. We're going to praise God. Uh, we're going to look into his word and we're going to do it under the premise that we're the gathering of the church. There's nothing wrong with that. There would be nothing wrong with us meeting somewhere else on a Sunday night, going as, as a small group. I know that's a, a thing that's what went across this country, you know, and it's sad that there's these terms that people use and immediately people have a preconceived idea about it, but like small groups. And uh, as long as it's all for the edifying of the body and getting together for the edification of the body. There's times I've gathered together. In fact, I got invited over to Liberty last night to go to a, a guy's house, and he said, this is what we're going to do. He said, we're going to grill out, and then we're going to worship God. Now, he's not the church. He never declared this to be the church. He didn't last night. But I was sitting there. We ate that burger, which that was the first requirement of meeting with the church. We ate, and then, <laughs> and then I said, and then we started just singing and worshiping God, and I looked at that guy, and I said, now, I, I wouldn't say this about our church. I said, but this is, this is more church than a lot of these people have experienced in a long time, even though it wasn't like this, like what she was saying. It was just, so we want to be careful. We want to, we want to, there's, you don't want to be careless. We're trying to build this thing upon truth. Amen. All right. Well, we need to stop. I'm going to give you all testimony about Abel that I got to witness to on Tuesday. I want to tell you all about that um, in the morning service. Let's have a word of prayer. Now I do, uh, before I pray, I do want you to go home. Use this paper. I'll have more papers next week. Hold on to all these. Young people, if you weren't here, if you're below the age of 18, if you fill these out every week and at the end of these nine weeks, you can bring all nine of those things filled out to me. Uh, we're going to do something special. We'll just take you and get you some pizza. And, uh, and if you have a young person that wasn't here today, let them come back next week. Uh, it doesn't require perfect attendance. But take the effort to write these things down, share them with your young people, talk about them at home today. Wouldn't that be cool? I tell you, you'll have a lot better time talking about that than you will talking about me. Amen. I'll give you a lot to talk about. But just pull that thing up. Say, you know what? What do you all think about this? What do you think about this? And it'd be good to talk about those things on the way home. But uh, that, that question, go home. I gave you an assignment. And uh, looking forward to hearing what you have to say about it next week. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the time we've had today. We pray that you bless this service we're about to go into and uh, continue to bless this time as we study through um, these truths from your word. And just kind of peel back the, the religion that always creeps in, the, the rut we get into where we start to do things and they become repetitive and they lose their meaning. Lord, all we're trying to do is just follow you and not become lax in our love for you, not depart our love for you, not become cold, not to become lukewarm, but to... Uh, become more fervent in our love for one another and our love for you. We pray that you'd help us in doing this in Christ's name. Amen.